Hey there. In this video, we're going to be talking about custom task functions and how they can be run like cron jobs on a scheduled interval. We'll be using the command line tool to generate a new task function, then write some custom code within it and deploy it to a workspace where then we can see it executing by reviewing the function's production logs. Let's jump right into it. So before we get started, please note that we have some good documentation about task functions. If you go to docs.apbase.com, uh, here you can find out you know, the different parameters and configurations that they expose, as well as how to just set them up in general. Uh, however, in this example, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a workspace called Vu to dos um, It's a to -do application that I've used before in previous videos. However, the one thing that we will do for the sake of this video is add a complete by field to our to-do, which is going to be a date. Let's just leave it as date, right? And um, let's give it a default value of, let's say we have to complete all our new things by December 5th of 2019, and it's mandatory. I'm gonna create that field, and we're good. So let's now jump into the command line and get started. So now in my command line, um, and I also have my text editor open here, I'm going to just take a peek at the generator commands that we have for uh, custom functions. So if we do 8base uh, g, and we can use generate or g, it's just an alias, task, and then let's look at the uh, help that we have for this. So we can see that, okay, well on the generate task uh, command, we can pass schedule, which would be the schedule on which the task runs, um, whether or not we want to include mock files, whether or not the syntax should be uh, TypeScript or JavaScript, as well as whether or not we want to disable printing the information to the console. So really the important one here is the schedule, right? So first we're just going to initialize the task function with a schedule of going once per day, or let's actually do once per minute so we can see it when we when we run it after deployment. So let's do 8base g task, and then let's give it the name. So let's call this name um, un incomplete incomplete tasks report all right and then we're going to say okay it has a schedule sch schedule which goes at a rate of one minute cool so if i run that we can see that okay so it updated our 8base.yaml file which if i click over here we can see that it did that we also created a handler file as well as the mock so we could run it immediately all right so and you can see here how it did the the syntax where it says okay well the schedule it's running at is one rate per minute these are just convenience functions essentially or a syntax so if we want to say one per minute one per hour one per day uh, it would be super straightforward however if you do want to use cron syntax you absolutely can and i would recommend that you check out the documentation or a much more thorough overview of what that would look like. So in that case, let's jump into our source directory and look at our tasks, which now we have our incomplete tasks report and the handler function for it. So you can see that it also gave us the command that we could use to invoke that function locally. So if we just pasted that into our command line, we can see that, hey, it's running and boom, it received the data that we sent it, which is the data that was specified within the mock file. So if you wanted to have any different types of arguments coming to that function, uh, you could specify it here, right? Um, but remind you, this is only for your local development environment so that you won't have to deploy your function to production every time you want to invoke it. And so if we were to look at the handler file, you see that, hey, we have our context argument coming in, we have the event coming through, and then inside of here, we can run any type of JavaScript that we want any script that we write, right? So since this is the incomplete tasks report, what we will do is we will write a query that will bring back all the tasks that are not done and after a certain date or after their completion date, right? So let's jump in and do that right now. So to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and wrote the query out in my API Explorer and just tested that it worked. And um, as well as created the argument that we are going to be passing to that query. So just to walk you through it really quickly, what we're going to be doing is passing a date, which is going to be today, to our query. 
which then queries a list of to-dos and filters them by were they completed or should they be completed by later than today and are they still pending. So this will be our list of incomplete to-dos. And then we'll get back uh, how many that we have as well as the description for each of those. And then to get the date for today, simply said create a new date, convert it to JSON, and then split it on T and give me back the first argument or the first um, item in the array. So that will work to give us a date string that looks something along the lines of this. So 2019, let's say 20 or 09 for the month and then 25. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, taking our context argument that we get from the custom function, let's get the API and run a GraphQL request, which then we're going to pass the query to as the first argument. And then our variables which is going to be today. And then one thing we're going to do is we're just going to say check permissions false. The reason we're doing this is because we do not want to have to specify any type of API token or any type of role that this custom function is going to be inhibited by. We just want to say all the to do's that are out there, bring them back and we're going to end up just printing them to the console for the sake of example. So what we're going to do is await for this to execute and then we're going to get st or store the response right here. Cool. And so then what we want to do very simply is we're going to console log out the um, minute report. Cool. And then right here, just put the response. Oh, the rest. Perfect. There. And what we can then say is report for the result on our custom function. We could say the report. Uh, has run cool so oh, one second let me I think that is what it's asking for yeah that's it cool so what's next just to mention in this example to where our task is running on an interval the response does not mean as much as maybe the console log output would right so let's actually take this and deploy it. So eight base, oop, one second, I'm going to eight base config, make sure that I'm in the right workspace. So I'm going to go to my vu to do's, new vu to do's, that's the one. Cool. All right, and then I'm going to run eight base deploy. So let's give this just a quick minute to upload the new function. The function's now deployed and I've let it stay up there for a minute or two so we can jump in and actually look at the production logs as they've been running. So if I move over to my workspace and I go to my logic section, I'm gonna reload this page. And cool, our incomplete tasks report is now here and we can see that it runs every minute. So let's move over to the function logs, which is right here in this tab. And if we do that, cool. So we see that it's been running a number of times and the minute report is giving us our to-dos list. Uh, these are all the to-dos that are not done yet, um, but still have time to be completed. And we can just see that there's only one of them in there that fits the criteria or our search criteria. If we want to, of course, we always let these logs or tail these logs and have them start populating in real time, right? So this is a great example of how you could create any type of reoccurring task or automate any type of reoccurring task uh, by deploying a custom function on a scheduled interval. However, if we look at the documentation, we could also see that we could use tasks in a different way. So for example, if we did not specify a schedule, right, that task would have been deployed, but we wouldn't really have a way of invoking it. The way that you would invoke it is potentially from other custom functions, whether that be a webhook, a resolver, or even some type of trigger. And what you can do is you can use the context argument and there's a method on it called invoke function, which you give the function name to. You then can specify the arguments that you want passed to your custom function, as well as specify whether or not you want to wait for the response. If you say wait for response false, that function or that 
task that just got invoked will run asynchronously and you can res return an immediate response to whichever function or the script that you are currently working in, rather than having to wait for a task that might take a long time to actually complete. I hope this was a really valuable video for you in understanding how to get up and running by writing custom tasks and deploying them to a workspace, as well as how to specify them or when you want them to run on an interval, or potentially use them from other functions by invoking them with the invoke function method. If you have any questions, please leave some comments in the video, and looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.